your house. The great people at AEW have heard our own cry. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling, but before we do that, someone did not learn their lesson. Melissa Moon, you have very unwelcome comments. You have earned this. And. Oh, look at that. You know what? For someone who doesn't like pro wrestling, for someone who thinks bad things about me, you watch the show a lot. That's weird. But that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about some pro wrestling because, oh my goodness, glory me. The people at AEW have heard the outcries of the millions and millions of fans. Probably including myself. Although, my opinion probably counts very little. But that's okay, though. Mainly because, wow, this was a stacked show. Let's get right to it. We start off hot. Someone jumped Matt Hardy in the back. And you have no idea who it was. I think I kind of missed that. I don't know. Whatever. I was, like, cooking dinner for myself, so. Seeing Matt Hardy get beat. Yeah, I could beat up again. I could have sworn Rebby had that look. Like, you're coming home now, mister. But I guess that didn't happen. So, um, it starts off Lucha Express versus FTR, and then to start off, the Young Bucks just show up to the ring, super kick the ref. Then they throw a whole stack of probably clean, crisp $100 bills that Tony Khan at the gorilla position. I couldn't do that. At best, I'd be able to throw some loose change at one of my bosses after I super kicked someone, I guess. I don't even know who I'd super kick. But yeah. So again, that was pretty impressive. So, so all the referees show up, the Young Bucks, they're like, whatever, find us again. Uh, so it starts off hot. Uh, Lucia Express takes on FTR. Wow. This is what happens when you let FTR work a wrestling match. FTR, they work, they start off, they work over the arm of Jungle Boy. Very classic wrestling, very classic isolation, uh, body part isolation in a tag team match. Again, both of them, um, they would come in. Dax would do the arm ringer, tag off, switch off the arm ringer to um, Scott, I guess. I honestly forget what their name I tried to write their names on, but yeah, Wheeler. And Hardwood? Wow, that's a bad name. Whatever, I might have gotten their names wrong. But yeah, this is classic old school wrestling tag team action. This is... Wow, good. A Jungle Boy makes his comeback. Then Luchasaurus gets tagged in. Big, heavy... Again, good big guy stuff. Um, again, the catch power slam off the top rope. That was good. Uh, Jungle Boy, the rolling sense on of, Luch of Luchasaurus's back was pretty interesting. Again, there was enough classic wrestling with some more modern wrestling, a little bit more of the flippy stuff. It was good. It made sense. It jived. It felt like a good, clean wrestling match. It felt, in some instances, like a fight when it got awkward. It didn't have that Botch awkward, it felt like the, the fight awkward, which is always what you want to see in any pro wrestling match. Oh, I'll give that shout out later. Um, let's see what else. The only really weird thing, when Jungle Boy hit that double Huracrana on FTR, yeah, yeah, that's when you have the believability wanes a little bit, but the rest of it is darn good. Getting the good rope running, the catch slam by oh, Scott Doss, by Dax Wilder, I guess, or or, or Dax Wheeler. I, I honestly, I, I get it too. I I was just getting them straight when they were in WWE. Now they changed their names up, and mind blown. 
Yeah, it happens even to the best of us, folks, especially with age. Age doesn't help anything. But it was a catch, it was a catch slam into the bone arrow, which is good. Again, they now work over the back, the assisted gut buster. FTR, they, like most great tag teams do, they isolate kind of the weaker person and then beat him up. And, of course, this being Jungle Boy, because you're not going to really beat up Luchasaurus. You might get him out of, out of his game Yeah, every so often. Um, there was a pass-off Gord Buster that was really good. A uh, Wheeler missed something. Luchasaurus came in. Again, he, he gets the hot tag, the chops, the headbutt, the pump kick. Kind of classic big guy striking routine. Fun stuff. Um, Wheeler got tossed <laughs> into hardwood. Yeah, I forget, one of the two. Uh, Luchasaurus with a hook kick. Um, spinning kick. Kicks all over the place. That was fun. Again, this was a good, solid match. Um, then there was a series of... Ro uh, Jungle Boy got tagged in, attempted a series of roll-ups. And then Luchasaurus is on the outside. FTR pull off the dirty pin with the help of one. Tully Blanchard. I'll tell you what. Uh, it was really good. Wait, was it all... Oh, there was only like two singles matches? Wait a second. One, two, yeah, three singles matches. So again, the AEW is focusing on what AEW does best, and that is tag team wrestling. Because I'll say what, this was an amazing match. Surf and turf match. <coughs> Ooh. Went down the wrong pipe there for a second. We have our next single match: Hagman and Page. You know, Frankie Kazarian. Hagman and Page is such an amazing singles wrestler. Frankie Kazarian knows his stuff. Uh, starts off Kazarian a good takedown. I like the fact that Kazarian mis mixes classic collegiate wrestling with good technical pro wrestling. It's such a breath of fresh air from seeing flip, 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 flip. That can be good if it's the right people in the right circumstance. Again, Will Osprey versus Ricochet. Amazing. Stuff I can never do, stuff I've never seen before. When you start to see it all the time, you're like, oh, okay, this, they do this all the time. But when it comes back to basic fundamentals, this was really good. Uh, Kazarian, he has knee strikes. Uh, Paige, he has a catch slam. Again, Paige showing that he's a little stronger. Uh, again, Paige has a little bit more jack look than Kazarian does. Kazarian, Kazarian is a smart, wily, has smart, wily old man muscle, though. He's that kind of classic technician, the wily old veteran. Um, they go to the outside for a little bit, then they come in, do the yay, the yay boos. Yay, boo. Uh, and then it started to be counter after counter. Again, when you start adding in the technical component to a pro wrestling match, it's really good. It's really fun to see. It is that nice breath of fresh air because then you save the flippy stuff, and the flippy stuff looks that much more impressive. Um, uh, Kenny Omega's on the mic. He talks about his tag team partner. Just sounds like a jilted lover. Yeah, whatever, Kenny Omega. He was better as the cleaner Kenny Omega underneath AJ Styles. And then when he got too talky, he just kind of tuned him out for some reason. Um, Paige, the sliding lariat, the pump handle DVD. That was kind of the only, like, if, if you think. Still not that bad. He also got that catch sit out power bomb, And then he hits the buckshot lariat. Kazarian, I'll tell you what. Good stuff again. A surf and turf quality match. Then Hangman calls out for his beer. Well, I can't toss a beer. He takes his beer. That was a nice big swig of it. Drunk hang Hangman or alcoholic Hangman for some reason seems to be best Hangman. It does add... If they do it right, 
It adds a little more dimension into Hangman Adam Page. He feels like a cowboy. What do cowboys drink? They beat up people. They get in bar fights. They drink. They drink some whiskey, and then they and they go do like cow herding stuff and get bad guys. If Hangman Adam Page is going to stay with this Hangman Adam Page gimmick, it works. Again, as long as and I hate to say this, as long as AEW doesn't go WWE with with the beer drinking stuff or or any of the alcohol stuff with Hangman and Page, it should be good. WWE would take this way too far and be ridiculous. So again, AEW has to temper itself just a little bit for this to really continue and be a good story where you're going to see Hangman and Page versus Kenny Omega in a grudge match. So that would be good. Then we have MJF. The next match we have MJF taking on I don't know jobber guy. <laughs> MJF's entrance is longer. It was good though because this starts to build up MJF as a legitimate heel. It starts to build him back up into the whole title picture, makes him more relevant. Where MJF is the one. Oh, thumb to the, or poked, eye poke. Uh, I guess on the Fujiwara armbar. And that's really about it. So that, so that was good. It builds up MJF. It's good. Um, again, a two-move match is never going to be a five-star match. But for what it was and for what it does for MJF now, this was a ham sandwich. Then we have Ricky Star, Ricky, um, Ricky Stark's little, little info about him from Taz, the human suplex machine. He 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 tells how he does the spear, goes into the technical details of it, which is really good. Again, it's more informative because it's a little background on Ricky Starks and the Rochambeau, how he does it in his two ways, depending on who he's wrestling. This makes sense. This is good. This 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 really adds overall to the knowledge of professional wrestling. Say, hey, you can do it both ways. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's fun. Um, Eddie Kingston comes out. Um, they say when families have struggles together, they just they they go out to dinner. But we're a violent family, so so we just beat up people. Um, they pull jobbers from the crowd, just beat them up, whatever, and then eventually. The butcher is going to have to take back his his wife, the bunny, Allie, from QT Marshall. So we'll see where this goes. Th this has the negative potential for a very bad WWE storyline. But we'll see. The jury's still out on this. Then our next tag match, we have Private Party taking on Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar. Hagar is too strong for the most part. Whenever... Private Party has to get some offense in on a Hagar. For the, at least this opening part of the match, they have to do a lot of double team work. Again, the, assist, the assisted um, drop toe hold, and they double drop kick Chris Jericho out of the ring. Good, smart stuff. If you're a tag team and you have a tag team continuity, you want to use those tag team moves to your advantage. You want to use that continuity towards your advantage. And um, then, of course, after all that, we have the uh, stereo dives to the outside. Hager's a little bit too strong in, in the ring. Um, Chris, again, the Chris Jericho does a double neck chop, which is good to see. Again, old school. Who was it? It was the one Mexican guy, one uh, luchador from Nintendo Pro Wrestling. I think it was. It wasn't the Piranha guy. Starman, who used to do the, the flying the flying cross shops. Chris Jericho picked that up. Again, it's nostalgic. It's it's old school. I, I think I actually beat that game. I used Slender King? Or King Slender? I forget he was a blonde haired guy because he had I want to say he had the pile driver and the backbreaker 
and everyone and yeah, it was a pile driver, the backbreaker, and I think everyone used the suplex. So that so he was the best because he had like the the three the three brutal moves. Piranha guy had the brain buster. Oh no, it was um Japanese guy had the brain buster and the insiguri or the ghetto blaster. Piranha guy had the choke and the piranha bite. Starman had flying cross chops and something else. I for, I forget the rest. It's, it's going back in memory. It's it's been a while, folks. But yeah, it was good to see that again. Um, Hagar, when Hagar gets into heavy body shots, you can tell he's really working the body of the one person in private party. And, and I got private party, and Street Prof is confused with their names. I know it's Isaac, it's, uh, it's Quinn, and Isaac something. Mark Quinn and, and something and Isaac something. I honestly forget. Um, so from there, something, Isaac Cassidy, yep, the, something on, you see, started to work over, um, both Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar, Hagar puts in the, the big, really chin lock, reverse chin lock. All well, this private party hit the silly string counter, which is good. Quinn, again, the inverted atomic drop. Whenever you do old school wrestling moves, I always applaud that. And to the pop up drop kick, that looked absolutely amazing. Um, there was a strong back uh, backbreaker. Then uh, a little bit, there was a little flippy flying stuff. But eventually, Chris Jericho hits the Judas effect. The right team won. It was a good match, not as good as the first one, and it will not be as good as the main event, but still, nothing could have been as good as the main event, at least for this show. It was solid, though. A cheeseburger match. I'm going to get this done under time. It's good. Then we have Ivelisse versus Thunder Rosa. Oh, wow. This is something out of AAA or even CMLL. I'll tell you what. The NWA woman's belt, even though it looks like Mula's belt, where it has a portrait of Thunder Rosa denoting her as the champion, the NWA woman's belt looks so much better than the AEW woman's belt. And I think they changed the AEW Women's Belt. I think they made it looked a little bit bigger. I think the AEW Women's Belt looks looked absolutely terrible. It looked like something my nephews made out of scraps of of, of broken up aluminum and tin and some cheap black leather. And like it looks like they took one of my sisters. Like wide black belts and strap some tin, strap some tin to it. Uh, and I've been a big. If you're gonna have a championship belt, it should look good. The NWA Women's Belt that looks the way a woman's belt should be. The WWE Women's Belts just look like smaller versions, and and the with a white strap. The men's, I think they're almost the same size. They just have the only difference is the white strap. I do kind of miss the Butterfly Divas belt and the old school women's title. At least those two other belts looked a little more feminine. These just look like, like white versions of the main belts. So you're like, yeah. But I'll tell you what, that NWA women's title, that's a pretty good looking women's belt. This is a good looking woman's belt. The next T is okay. Again, this looks like a sm smaller, different version of the men's. Impact has a, has a decent looking woman's belt. Now, now that you think about it, Stardom just has the big star on it. I think so. Yeah. Again, NWA women's belts, best looking women's belt. But in this match, I digress. We have Ivelisse versus Thunder Rosa. Oh, something out of CML. 
Ole, 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 lucha, lucha, lucha. So that was, that's always good to sing. I got to sing my lucha song. Ole, 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 lucha, lucha, lucha. It's always fun. Um, again, gets gets the blood flowing, gets you excited a little bit. Um, again, the trade of arm bar, pick, trade of mix of arm drags, cla classic American style, Evilies slap Thunder Rosa. Oh, that looked vicious. So then Thunder Rosa slapped her back. Tell you what, Thunder Rosa with that face paint looks pretty cute. And Evilies, she's just all red everything. Evilies, uh, Thunder Rosa. And Evil East, they, they really trade everything. They trade arm drags, they tra trade hurricanas, trade head scissors, trade headlocks. Um, it's kind of that thing, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Yeah, that whole song. Um, Diamante then gets up. She's a distraction into the ring. Uh, Evil East gets at the big knees, and then it actually turns into a proper wrestling match where it's one side come back, kind of that, that kind of deal. Um, they go to the outside, and the chops right in front of Sheeta. Yes, that lets you know. Eventually, I wonder if they're gonna do something where one of those women, and it could be Sheeta, it could be Thunder Rosa, will have a champion for champion match, and we'll have two belt Sheeta because AEW's eating up a lot of NWA wrestlers and or a lot of NWA wrestlers have gone to oh um GWF and more of the West Coast promotions I think more of the Midwest West Coast um haven't heard a lot and CZW still around or they might have gone back to Ring of Honor. So we'll have to see where that goes. Um, Ivelisse does the yes kicks on, on the last one. Thunder Rosa caught it. The dragon screwed leg whip. Thunder Rosa again. <sighs> the, just those big knees of Thunder Rosa. Vicious knees. Um, oh, yes. Thunder Rosa tore her pantyhose. Yeah. That's what I like to see. Baby! Baby! Um, yeah. <laughs> few things that excite me about women's wrestling. Torn pantyhoses. Wow. Um, Thunder Rosa then hit a tombstone. Um, Thunder Rosa picks up the win. I'll tell you what. Another really good match. The tombstone looked looked kind of wonky because it looked like she was like trying to like hold her head up, and make sure that head was above her knees. Um, a cheeseburger match though. And from an EW's perspective, this is probably one of the better women's matches they've had in a while. They're slowly building things up in the women's division. They've gotten, they've kind of sorted through some, some, some of the junk, I guess. And they're figuring out who can actually work, which is good. Um, in the ring, Diamante jumps under Rosa, takes the belt. She jumps into the ring, takes the belt back. Classy puts the belt back on th Thunder Rosa's shoulder. Again, good job, Hikaru Shida. Alan Archer comes to the ring. He throws some poor luchador in the ring. He calls out Taz. The human suplex machine. And then eventually we're going to have Team Taz and Lance Archer. And Team Taz consists of the machine Brian Cage and absolute Brian um, Ricky Starks. I think that's what he called them. And Lance Archer on Mox's team. They're going to have this guy, Will Hobbs. Never heard of him. From the West Coast somewhere. No clue who he is. And Darby Allen. Will Hobbs is out of all of these, the only two people that would possibly eat the pin. I think it's going to be Will Hobbs. 
And then we have our main event of the evening. And wow, this was a good main event. It was Santana Ortiz, who came out looking like the Grills of Destiny. Or like dead... Like people were saying in chat they looked like the dead presidents. No, no, no. They looked more like the Grills of Destiny. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Tama Tonga goes to Instagram and says something about that. Because they looked absolutely terrifying though. Which is the way they should be for a parking lot match. Taking on the best friends. Best friends came out kind of for the most part in street clothes. Again, it makes sense. There's very sharp things. Uh, starts off. Cars got wrecked. Um, Santana Ortiz gets slammed into the car. Um, I think it was Ortiz. I, I do get the two of them confused. Gets underneath the hood. Again, they're wrestling either on cars or using cars most of the match. Ortiz goes under the hood. They pop the hood open. Throw Ortiz underneath the hood. Bounce the hood off his entire body. And then there was a splash onto the hood. And then there was a scent on onto the hood. Wow. Um, from there, Trent with like, not two by fours, but like like one by, one by fours, I guess. Really flimsy things. Um... And then brings those out. And Trent, you have to be very careful. Because he swung one of those 1x4s. But the 1x4s are really springy. If you hit it against the ground, it, it's Newton's Laws of Motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that 1x4 came right near Trent's head. Again, I saw that and I'm like, oh my god, no, please. Please, not another Joey Mercury incident. He got lucky. Again, ladders and and and, pe and large pieces of lumber. They kind of do what they want to do for some reason. It's like the table that no sells. So you have to be very careful about that stuff. Um, so that's yeah, that rebounded. Then those. Then he set up. Like a truck, he put a piece of plywood over the truck bed, opened up the tailgate of the truck. However, Santana catapulted him into it. That was really cool. Uh, then Santana just comes out busted open. Again, that makes sense, though. If you're, if you're going to be around glass, metal, fragments of wood, that makes sense. Ortiz pulls out a uh, billy club nightstick thing. Starts to beat up people. <laughs> and the best part um, even Tony calls it he calls it the bicycle rail Tony Shivani knows that it's not a true barricade he knows it's for bicycles thank you Tony that's been what I've been saying all along they use cheap barricades also called bicycle rails uh, Ortiz got speared through, through the door they set up yeah, there's a lot of garbage for some reason, like in those wastelands of Jacksonville for some reason. Um, then Trent, he, he got low blowed and then power bombed onto the car hood. That was great. Goes to the windshield. That's gets power bombed through the windshield. Ouch! Glass and human skin doesn't doesn't match. They don't mix, even if it's like. You can't really put sugar glass on a car because there's no way it would hold up. It doesn't necessarily need to be tough laminated glass. But still, though, even if it's single pane glass, not good. Even if it's like the gimmick cars. No bueno. Yeah, glass still cuts. And then they have some garbage cans. There's a big back body drop onto the trash cans. That was pretty cool. Again, there's there's a sledgehammer. There's only one person in all of pro wrestling who uses a sledgehammer, and that's Triple H. The game! I am the game! I am the game. This is how you take it. I am the game. This is how you make I forget a song, but it goes something like that. Lenny. Lenny rules. Yeah, I'm over it. <laughs> Um, 
Sir Santana drops, starts trumping f bombs. Orange Cassidy pops out of the trunk of a car. Oh, that was shocking. Yeah, he did the orange punch, but his fist was wrapped with a steel chain. Knocks out the one. Um, one got pile driven onto the car hood. The other got awful waffle through the plywood that was still on the truck bed. Best friends won. Awesome match. It's what WWE Underground should be. It's what that one NXT match should have been uh, when it was the parking lot brawl between Adam Cole, baby! Boom! Versus Velveteen Dream. This is what it should have been. AEW figured out, it's like, hey, this is what the fans didn't like. Let's give the fans what they like. Have it make sense. This was amazing. This was a filet mignon match. And then Transom Hom shows up in a brand new white minivan. And Transom Hom, even she gives Santana Ortiz the finger. That's, 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 whoa. That's pretty cool. And she got a lot of gray hair very quickly, too. She obviously hasn't been to the hairdresser recently. I shouldn't be saying that. But that's okay. That was AEW. This was an amazing surf and turf show. And as far as the rest of the week goes, I'm off tomorrow. I don't have to do anything. Um, Friday's the last day I do something. This week, as far as wrestling goes, that's going to be the SmackDown review. There's nothing Saturday, nothing Sunday. I get to Tranquilo, which I'm kind of happy about because Clash of Champions is not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. So that's okay by me. And then, oh, Go Wrestling's back in Daytona Beach. The doors open. Unfortunately, this Saturday night at 730 I work until 7.30, so unfortunately, I won't be able to go. Um, first Saturday, I get off, and they are back. I do want to go there. I think my channel has been starved of live action for a while. Um, this will be good. It's something different. and I'll get a little bit of a taste of the independent scene here in Daytona Beach. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching, for I am the one, the only Hobo Tom.